In this video, I'm going to talk about the number one mistake that I see in DIY van builds. Two of the top videos that we've done on the channel are the biggest mistakes people make and then also the sequence of van building. We've done a couple of videos on this. We've done one on the sequence of van building and another one on the top five mistakes that we see van builders make. And I'll put links to those videos in the description. So what is the number one mistake? It is the sequence of the van build. This is so important in your final result. There are some things in the van build that don't really matter that much, the sequence. Um, there's a lot of things where we're waiting for a part, we'll do something else, and then we'll jump, jump back onto it. That's not a big deal, but there are certain things where it is critical, uh, the order that you do them, in order to get the final result of the van and also to save you a lot of time in not having to tear things out or redo them. Here's a van that we've just barely started. You can see we've done furring strips on the ceiling. You can see we've started to insulate. We've also pulled up the floor and done the insulation. Uh, we've done the max air fan in the front and we're getting ready to cut the hole for the air conditioner in the back. Now those are some of the first things that we do when we get a new van in is we just kind of start prepping it. Um, it's kind of like the foundation of a house, getting everything ready to make your build. And you know in a house, if the foundation is not done well and properly, then the end result of the house is it's not gonna be safe, it's not gonna be sturdy, and it's not gonna last. Now once we've done all of that prep work, uh, cutting the holes, um, putting in windows, putting in the capsules, if we're doing those, then we start laying out the van. And this van is gonna have a bench across that wall with a top loading cooler, electric cooler, and then a toilet, both on pullouts. And then on this side is gonna be the galley. And we've already built the galley, but one of the nice things about building it out of 80-20, or even if you're building it out of wood, is being able to pull things in and out as you're uh, working on the van. So you can see here in the back, we've got our electrical and we've got our plumbing on this side. And all of those were built outside of the van and then bench tested. We put water in it, pressurized the plumbing system. We uh, tested out the electrical system, make sure everything's working properly. And then we put them in the van. And at this point, this entire box is independent. And if we needed to, we could pull this out of the van for different things or pull it out away from the wall. And we do that when we're running the plumbing and the electrical. So building all of these structures, but having the ability to move them around and take them out of the van is something that we find is really important. Once we have all of these in the van, then we start doing our framing for the walls. And you can see we've got this framed out and a lot of this depends on what type of walls you're gonna do. If you're doing panel walls and ceiling, then you don't necessarily need to do furring strips. You can, but I find that it's optional. You can attach those um, wall panels directly to the metal of the van. In this van and in a lot of our vans, we do shiplap on the walls and we'll do some type of a wood ceiling, uh, whether it's slats or tongue and groove or shiplap or something like that. So we frame all this out. And what you wanna do is you wanna have um, furring strips wherever you're gonna to need to attach things. And these furring strips you can see around the capsules frame out where we're gonna finish the capsules. And also up there on the window, same thing. We framed it out exactly where we're gonna to wanna to attach our furring strips, bring it to, and then put trim around it. You can see up at the top, it runs right along the top. We'll have upper cabinets across the top so those upper cabinets will sit actually right on the top of that furring strip. So we're very strategic about where we put these furring strips. You can see there's none across this side, but then on this side, we do have furring strips. And that's because we're gonna have shiplap on this side, but on this driver's side, there'll be an upper cabinet the entire way. So we don't need furring strips there. In fact, we don't want them because they would just be in the way. So you can see here, we bring our furring strips right down to our structure. So we're on top of this, we're gonna have a one and a half inch extruded aluminum bar and then a half inch plywood um, for the bed platform. And so this comes right down to it. We don't, we don't need it going all the way to the walls. We're attaching our mechanical boxes directly to the metal of the van. And so there's no reason to put furring strips where we're gonna be attaching those. And that's true whether you're using wood or 
extruded aluminum. So right here is kind of a critical piece in the framing is we have this piece, you can see framing out this window, framing out this capsule and coming down here right to the top of where the bench is gonna be. We'll put, once we get our bench built, we'll put a burning strip all the way across here to attach shiplap. Um, and then we're gonna have a shiplap up here on the front so you can see right here where we're going to attach shiplap, we're going to bring it down. We've got furring strips everywhere that we need to be able to attach that wood. Now, I wanted to mention here a couple of resources that we've just added. Uh, one is we've got a DIY van build sheet. It's a Google sheet, Google Doc, that is a living, breathing document. So in the past, we've had links on our website. We've added links in the description that people can use to find the products that we've spent hundreds of hours researching and testing and that we use in our van builds. And a lot of people have found that very beneficial to be able to um, access that. Um, but it's really hard for us to keep that up to date when it's on our website. So what we've done is we've created a Google Doc with all of the products that we use and some alternatives that are maybe less expensive that we still feel are high quality, you can click the link in the description, go to that Google Doc, and then you can either download it and keep it on your computer or you can bookmark it and be able to refer back to it. Now I recommend you bookmark it because we will be updating it as we find new products or, um, and add those to the document. Now the second document that we're adding is a van build sequence sheet that you can download. A few months back, I did a video on the van build sequence, and I sh shared on that video the worksheet that we use. And I've had so many people ask if they could have access to that sheet. The problem is it's very, um, not necessarily proprietary, but it is designed for our workflow and our technicians. And a lot of things on that sheet would not make sense to a DIY builder uh, without an explanation. And we just felt like it wouldn't be very helpful. So we're going back and recreating that document so that it makes sense for a DIY builder. And that's gonna be available. Um, if it's not available at the time of, that you're watching this video, it will be very shortly. So check back and we'll put a link to that in the description. So you can see another thing here is we don't have the floor in. So that's another thing that I see DIY builders do is they put the floor in, in my opinion, way too early. Uh, it can get scratched, it can get damaged, but also there's no reason to have your floor go wall to wall. What we do is we put all of our structures in, our mechanical boxes, benches, galleys, all that kind of thing, and then we will put our floor in around those. A uh, couple of reasons for that. One is you don't need to add the extra weight, and another is most LVP flooring um, the type that we use and that most people use, it's intended to be a floating floor, to not be attached to the floor because it needs to be able to expand and contract. Now, depending on what type of flooring you're using, um, sometimes it is okay to attach things because it's a lot more rigid. We use one, a, a flooring that's a half inch thick. It's very rigid. It doesn't expand and contract much. And so if you're using floor like that, then you can get away with it, putting some things on top of it. But if you're using a thin, very um, flexible flooring, like for example, I know a lot of people use the uh, life proof flooring from Home Depot. I've seen where people have put things on top of that and it's not able to expand and contract and the floor is actually buckled. And so be really strategic about where you place your flooring. And like I say, we'll, we'll put this in probably in the last couple of weeks of the van build. We just leave it out and then it's really easy to put it in at the end. Um, we'll also not do our shiplap until towards the end. All of this stuff comes together really in the final two or three weeks of a van build. It's not necessary at this point. And to have it open just gives you a lot more flexibility in doing things that you need to do that you may not foresee. For example, if you need to run an extra wire that you didn't anticipate, if you've got your wall in, it's a lot more difficult. And I've heard people say, well, I run some conduit and I can pull a wire through that. And that's true, but that can be tricky because in a van, you have a lot sometimes really tight bends and tight places you have to go through and uh, you're may, maybe not able to get a wire pulled through those conduits. So it's a lot easier to just 
leave things open and be able to add things as you go. Because especially if you haven't built several vans, it's hard to know where you're gonna need all those electrical wires and where you're gonna put switches and outlets and all that kind of thing. So it's nice to be able to do those on the fly as you go if you wanna add something, have that flexibility. Now another thing about a DIY van build that you really need to take a lot of care and consideration in is your electrical. So routing your electrical wires and being able to add more as you're going through your build for things maybe you missed is so important. So I wanna show you the way that we do it. There's a couple of different options. One is in your furring strips, you can leave a little space, cut out a notch or something like I have right here, where you can run a wire over the top and down through here. And because we're gonna have a capsule here, there's a hollow channel right here where we'll run all of our wires, okay? So what we do is we'll, we'll put, we use this trim, and I'll link, to, this'll be in our Google Doc, you can, you can access this. We buy this trim that we can just put over these metal edges, and then we'll also use the wire loom and we'll put it over that, and that way we can pass it over the top and down past those. You can see one on this side, haven't put the, the trim there yet, but this will be able to pass over and down through and down. This is the light switch for the uh, ceiling lights. Okay, so that's the first way that we do it. The second is to run it right through the metal. Let me show you in a van that doesn't have the framing yet. It's a lot easier to do this before you frame the van out, is in this metal where above the window is to drill some holes. You can feel in the through here, you can see right here, there's a hole in the top, but there's not any in here. So what you can do is we we'll take like a three quarter inch hole saw, spray, we'll drill a few holes in this, we'll spray them with primer, and then we can run wires through this hole and then down through here and down. And then down below, this is a sprinter, but you can run wires down through here and down inside and run, run wires across this bottom section. So there's a lot of places that you can run wires. You can also run them down these channels. This is a hollow channel at the back of the window and also up at the front of the window. One thing that I just can't emphasize enough is when you are running your wires and you're going across metal, um, you have got to protect the wire. So we use a wire that is in a sheath, um, kind of like what you would see in a house, but the difference is this is stranded wire, marine grade stranded wire. Super important to use a stranded wire and not a solid copper wire like would be used in a, in a house. And that's because of the vibration. Um, so it does have a sheath that protects the inner wires, but you've got to have more protection than that because this is just a plastic and this can get rubbed and chafed and eventually um, cut into the wires and cause a short or even worse, damage your electrical system or cause a fire. So there's a couple of types of loom that we use. Uh, one is just a standard um, plastic loom. It's a split loom, so it splits open. You can just run a wire through it. And we'll use this type of loom, or there's another loom that's kind of a um, material. It's super, super strong. You'll see it in a lot of vehicles. They use these, they'll use both these types of loom. Um, but this loom I like because it is a little bit more flexible um, to work through holes. It also can squish if you need to have it fit through something that's a little bit tighter. Um, we use a lot of half inch in both of these looms. I think that's the size that we get, but I, it's, it's in our document, so you'll be able to find that. We'll also sometimes use a bigger loom. This is a one inch loom, so when we're, when we're running wires across the back wall, we'll use this bigger loom all the way across and run several wires through it. So you'll wanna have a, um, some different options, different sizes of loom. The other thing is anytime you're running things exterior, like in the engine bay or underneath the van, for example, your wires for your S-bar heater, your fuel line, wires for your alternator charging, things like that, you definitely wanna protect those in loom. And that not only protects them from the, in, the elements, the weather, the environment, but it also protects them from heat, like going over an exhaust system. So once we get all of our cabinetry, then we'll do our walls and our ceiling, and then we'll do all the trim work, and then we wrap up the van. So that's kind of our sequence. But like I said, we're gonna have a document that details all of the steps. Um, this is the way that we build vans. It's not the only way. Uh, you don't have to follow the way that we do it exactly, but at least this spreadsheet is gonna give you an idea 
of best practices for the overall sequence of your van. So check that out, link in the description. Now on this channel, we've got tons of videos about van building, van life, van products, um, tools for building, all kinds of things like that. So if you'd like to check out more videos, you can tap or click the screen. And be sure to smash that like button and subscribe to see more. Jeff with Thrive Vans, drive on. See ya.